an essential cross skill is how to get the bike up onto your shoulder and start running with it. We've already talked in an earlier video about how to dismount, get off the bike, and get on the bike, but today's video is gonna be all about how to get the bike up onto your shoulder and run with it. Before we get off the bike though, number one thing you have to think about that I've said in so many times over the years is, what gear am I going to be in? Whether you're going underneath something, over something, off camber, literally any time you're getting off your bike, you wanna be thinking about what's coming up next. And that is, long before you get off your bike, what gear do I need to be in? So let me give you guys a lay of the land. We come off this section and we come up to here and there's this really, steep, sandy uphill section. It is uh, hard. This is our local training loop and I can barely ride this when I'm fresh as a daisy. So eight laps into your race or your training race or your training session, it's gonna be super hard. So I always say, if you can't ride something 10 out of 10 times, then you probably shouldn't even try. So it makes more sense every single lap to come down this section, think about what gear I need to be in, and then just assume that I'm gonna be running this. Okay, gear selection, got it, wrote it down. You know the lay of the land, you know what you're getting yourself into, make sure you plan all that. All right, so how the heck do I actually get the bike up on my shoulder? So there are two different ways to be able to get the bike up onto your shoulder. Start off with number one. Left hand on the left shifter, right hand about three quarters of the way up on the down tube. So about right here, then you just wanna be lifting the bike up onto your shoulder. The second way is what I call the Bart Wellens flick, meaning Bart Wellens used to always take the bike and just flick it onto his shoulder and then he would start running. Back in the day, I always used to look at him, but what the heck is he going on? Because he'd be running and the bike would be flying in the air and he'd have it on his shoulder and he'd be gone just like that. So the Bart Wellens flick is when you take your hand and you actually twist it around. So typically when you're getting off your bike, you've kind of got your hand here, you've got this here, you've got your hip attached to your saddle and you're going into a barrier or whatever. All that gets thrown out the window with the Bart Wellens flick. You get off the bike, you're running with it, and then you twist your hand like this and you throw the bike up and you throw it up onto your shoulder like that. The worst part about the Bart Wellens flick that can get you into trouble is if you hit your funny bone. Traditionally, the smaller cross frames and bikes that aren't shaped with this sort of high sloping tube here at the back, they can allow you, if you're too high on it, to hit your funny bone on that down tube, and it really, really is not funny. So now that we've got the bike up on our shoulder and it's nice and balanced, we're gonna talk about the different ways that you can run with it. So once you've got it up onto your shoulder, there's two different ways that you'll be able to run with the bike. One is the traditional way that I always personally used to do, and that is where you turn the front tire after you get the bike up onto your shoulder, you kind of open what I call a door here with that front tire to be able to let your arm freely go through there. If it's closed, well, you guys can see, it's, it's you're not gonna be able to get your arm through there. So you gotta open that up a little bit and then you grab the lowest part of the bar here and then you're able to be in a nice kind of like spartan position where you're running with the bike so the other way that riders like to typically do is they take their hand and they put it around the front and then they grab this top part of the shifter here the hood and then they run with it like that a lot of bigger riders like this because they've got those really long arms smaller riders again all personal preference. But the main thing is that you practice each of them and you figure out which one works best for you and your body type and the bike that you're using. Okay, so something else that I wanna to talk to you guys about is getting off and carrying your speed before you even get the bike up onto your shoulder. The last thing that you wanna do is lose all of your momentum by stopping right on the hill. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. You try to ride this section carrying some speed and then you get here and you can't make it and you have to stop you've lost a ton of time. You should have started running with the bike down there, carrying your speed, carrying your momentum, and knowing exactly the moment that you're gonna get off the bike and start running with it. Not try to make it halfway up the hill, lose a bunch of time, get all discombobulated, have someone run into the back of you. Don't do that. Get off down at the bottom, run with the bike, carry your speed and your momentum up to the top. So one more important thing to think about is making sure that you've got short little pitter-patter feet. You don't wanna be trying to take long, crazy big steps and losing your traction. Obviously, 
taller riders, no problem doing that. But shorter riders, nice small steps to be able to get traction consistently in a similar motion to your pedal stroke is what I recommend. Quick feet, short steps. Now I need to think about how I'm gonna get the bike back down. It's the left hand on the left shifter. Right hand comes out, hits three quarters of the way down the down tube. Now I slide the bike down my arm. Right hand goes on the right shifter. One, two, three, hit that inside of my leg and off I go. The question that I know that I'm gonna get is, I don't wanna put my bike up on my shoulder. I need to do all that. I just run with it next to me. Now that is the third way to be able to get the bike up away from you and run with it. But typically I only do that if it's really short. If you're gonna be doing a longer run, pushing your bike through mud or sand is really slow. It gets the bike dirty. It's not a very efficient use of your energy out on the cross course. So super important to learn these techniques to be able to get the bike up on your shoulder and run with it full steam ahead. That is how you get off the cross bike and run with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It has literally taken me a lifetime to accumulate all of these little intricacies that make getting off the bike actually doable and fun. I hope you guys share this, like it, ooh, and definitely tap that little bell icon over here so you know every time GCN uploads a new video. If you guys liked it, leave a comment below. Give it a thumbs up. Always subscribe to GCN. See ya!